to our guests in Dublin, in Belfast, in China and elsewhere. I'm Catherine Godson from University College Dublin and Science Secretary of the Academy. I welcome you virtually to Academy House, the home of the Royal Irish Academy, which we've just seen in the video images. So this is a very special occasion where we award the Kathleen Lonsdale Chemistry Prize to Dr. Ikai Zhu of Queen's University, Belfast. We're really delighted to welcome Dr. Zhu's family, his academic collaborators and mentors, and many members of the chemistry community. We especially welcome Dr. Hugh Fay, representing our generous sponsors, Henkel. Henkel's sponsorship of this award is vital in enabling us to recognize excellence in early career research in chemistry. The Kathleen Lonsdale Chemistry Prize was established at the Academy in 2000. And the Royal Irish Academy works each year with the expert members of the Physical, Chemical and Mathematical Sciences Committee to select the prize winner based on their outstanding PhD research captured in an essay, which they describe which is judged by, by our panel of assessors. And this is in the general area of the chemical sciences uh, performed on the island of Ireland. So as the recipient of the Academy Prize, Dr. Zhu's award-winning essay on the construction of bulk materials with nanofunctionality through self-assembly was also selected to represent Ireland in the prestigious IUPAC Salve International Competition. <laughs> been able to recognize the impressive research of many promising doctoral students in chemistry over the past several years. Unfortunately, this year, the pandemic has forced us to remain distant from each other and to hold our ceremony virtually. However, to help bridge that gap, we've invited some of our former winners to reconnect with us and to tell us something about their research and what winning the prize meant to them. I won this award for my research in molecular magnetism, which sounds like a very far out area, but everyone understands what a magnet is, what it does, but not very many people understand how it does this. We want to look at what we could do with shape. Can we change it? If we think of a fridge magnet, it's a large black block. We know it attracts metals. It doesn't attract wood. How does this do it though? On a molecular level, we can do chemical changes, look at the shape and see how we can affect the properties. So one of my favorite areas of my research was taking these compounds that usually end up being what we call octahedral, which look like a diamond, be able to do a chemical change and then make them what we call trigonal prismatic. So it looks like a tent. This was the first example of this from manganese. One of the main reasons I applied for the Young Chemist Award is that I felt I had some really interesting results and it's a great way to also disseminate your research in a very kind of understandable way. It challenges you to take interesting and complex topics and write about them so you can explain it to your next door neighbor or to anyone you meet in the street. Winning this award really opened up doors for me. It's great to get recognition from your peers in the scientific community, but it also helps you then in your career further on when you go, I'm an award-winning chemist. It proves that you can carry your research at a really high level, but also disseminate it in a very understandable way. My PhD project was about fabricating biofuel cells to generate electricity from biofuels such as glucose in body fluids. What I really liked about this research was the positive impact it could have on people's lives. I have clear memories on the awarding ceremony last year and the visit to the Royal Irish Academy House. My PhD research focused on key motifs in natural products and pharmaceuticals. At the time, I never imagined I would one day be up there receiving the same prize myself. However, at the same time, it helped give me belief that it was something that would be possible. So when the opportunity came to submit an essay myself, I was delighted to be able to do so. When I received the prize, I was a postdoctoral research associate at Imperial College London. And at the time, it helped give me much more belief and confidence in my abilities. And it also helped me with the next stage of my career. My thesis was entitled In Search of Strong Light Harvesting and Long Life, Resinium and Iridium Triplet Photosynthesizers. My thesis focused on the design and synthesis of the novel heavy metal complexes, which can be applied in a new and topical photonic energy transfer process called upconversion. This energy transfer process uses heavy metal complexes as triplet photosynthesizer 
for capturing the low energy light and converting it into a high energy light. As we know, the energy crisis is a hot topic in recent decades. The up conversion process has been shown to improve the efficiency of solar cells. Additionally, it also can be used to broaden the application of photodynamic therapy in the treatment of certain types of cancer, such as skin cancer. I really hope that my work could contribute to saving people's lives who are suffering and bring them a bright future. I also really hope the future recipients of this award could take this opportunity and have a try and make the world a better place. So many thanks to our contributors for sharing their inspiring stories with us. And Ikai, we look forward to hearing from you maybe next year. So on behalf of the Academy, I'd like to thank our panel of assessors for their commitment and diligence in the difficult task of selecting a winner. So thanks are due to Dr. Katerina Nestorenko of Science Foundation Ireland, Peter Robertson, Professor of Chemical Engineering at Queen's University Belfast, Sylvia Draper, Professor of Inorganic Chemistry at Trinity College Dublin, and Christine O'Connor from the Technological University of Dublin. So I'm now going to invite Professor O'Connor, Chair of the Assessors Committee, to say a few words about this year's competition and about our winner and his very noteworthy achievements. Thank you, Catherine. Um, the standard of applications for this prize is always extremely high, and this year was no exception. So as you've just seen from the videos there, we have very high standard of applicants from across Ireland. The assessment panel, who are members of the Physical, Chemical and Mathematical Sciences Committee of the Royal Irish Academy, read descriptions of some incredibly impressive research from chemists doing their doctoral research in universities all over the island of Ireland. I want to thank those who entered this competition and to congratulate you on the excellent research you are doing. We are here today to recognize the outstanding scientific achievements of our 2019 winner, Dr. Yikai Zhu. Yikai, his research focuses on the construction of bulk materials with nanoproperties through nanoparticle self-assembly for photonic applications. He is most recognized for his revolutionary work in nanoparticle self-assembly at liquid-liquid interfaces and their future applications in surface-enhanced Raman spectroscopy, which have been published in leading academic journals such as Small, Nanolet, ACS Nano and Advanced Materials. Yikai did his undergraduate in East China University of Science and Technology in Shanghai, where he majored in Applied Chemistry, Fine Chemical Engineering. He came to Belfast in September 2014 through an exchange program and did his final undergraduate year at the Queen's University. This was also when he entered Professor Bell's research group. He continued his studies at the Queen's University the following year and completed his PhD there under supervision of Professor Stephen Bell. He was recently been awarded a Leverholm Fellowship, which will allow him to continue his research in Belfast. Today's prize is in recognition of Yikai's thesis, as described in his essay, Construction of Bulk Materials with Nanofunctionality Through Self-Assembly. Through his doctoral research, he was able to show that the key to nanoparticle self-assembly was to reduce interparticle electrostatic repulsion, which was completely different to the generally accepted understanding regarding surface hydrophobicity. More importantly, this led to the discovery of a new mechanism which did not require any type of surface modification and could be generally used to assemble nanoparticles of any morphology and material composition into multi-dimensional arrays. Yikai was able to combine this method 
with an in situ polymer deposition technique, which allowed the various types of assembled particle arrays to be transformed into robust and flexible nanoparticle polymer hybrid materials. These two platform technologies give nanomaterials the potential for a broad range of everyday applications. For example, to detect trace amounts of drugs or explosives in different surfaces such as people's hands, or to find and neutralize harmful or cancer-causing chemicals in water. By using different types of nanoparticles as building blocks, these bulk nanomaterials can be built into antimicrobial surfaces, flexible conducting devices, and supercapacitors. On behalf of the evaluation panel, we would like to congratulate Dr. Yikai Zhu. I'll hand you back to Catherine. Thank you. Thank you, Christine, for these insights into Dr. Into Dr. Zhu's innovations on nanoparticle self-assembly. I now invite Dr. Hugh Fay of Henkel, joining us on behalf of the sponsors, to say a few words and to present this year's prize. Hugh. Thank you, Catherine. Um, you know, there are some good days at work, and today is one of the good days. It's just nice to be involved in something like this. Um, good afternoon, everyone. This is the fourth year that Henkel Ireland has had the honour of sponsoring this great event. And I do mean honour. We are delighted to be associated with the Kathleen Lonsdale, Lonsdale Prize. Here in Dublin, we have over 100 people working in R&D. So research in Ireland and supporting young researchers is of particular relevance to us. It may be of interest to you to know that this sponsorship has actually come from Henkel headquarters in Dusseldorf. There is a global fund for supporting meaningful social initiatives, which is termed Make an Impact on Tomorrow. And the fact that the corporate jury supports the Kathleen Lonsdale Prize is indicative of the esteem in which this event is held internally. Yikai, having read a summary of your work, it is clear that you are a most worthy winner. So all that remains for me to do is congratulate you and to virtually present you with your award. Dr. Yikai, you, I present you with the Kathleen Lonsdale RIA Chemistry Prize for 2019. So Dr. Zhu, would you like to say a few words now? Yes, yes. Thank you, Catherine. Um, thank you, Hugh, for, for the great talk and for presenting me my prize. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank you all for being here to um, share this wonderful moment with me from your living rooms, of course. Um, indeed, it's a, it's a pity we can't all be enjoying this ceremony together in Dublin. But um, on the bright side, at least this means I can wear a shirt with comfortable pants. Yeah, it's still a bit unbelievable, the, um, the global pandemic that we are going through. And, and that's why I want to especially thank Teresa, Carol, Helena, our sponsor, Hanko, and everybody else involved for all the hard work that they've put in to pull this online ceremony off. Um, thank you, because this really has been an unforgettable experience for me. I also want to thank RIA and Hanko for establishing the Keeflin Longstale RIA Chemistry Prize because the opportunity to get acknowledged at this national level really means so much to early career researchers like myself. It has really been a tremendous boost to my confidence and is already starting to make a huge impact on my young career, since it just helped me secure an independent fellowship at Queen's to pursue my own research. And before I say anything more, um, I want to state at the out front that I would have never got here without the support of so many so many. That's why I want to say thank you to my family, my friends, my colleagues, my teachers and mentors, especially Stephen, AP, and Paging, and more widely to the universities and organizations, especially ECUS, um, Queen's, the Royal Irish Academy, and the Royal Society of Chemistry. I have countless stories with you that have marked my growth, and a few of them I would like to share today with all of you. So I grew up in a family full of chemists, actually. Um, I've had to listen to scientific conversations for as long as I could remember. And believe me, it does sometimes rub you the wrong way. For example, when you have to sit through dinner in the middle of, the, of a crossfire of some heated discussion about how to, um, 
how to apply doubly hybrid density functionals to correctly describe density and en energy of atoms. See how I can't even say that properly because yeah, how'd you like that? Or when you can't figure out a math problem in fifth grade and your dad insists on showing you how to do derivatives because it was supposed to be easier. So, but growing up in this environment also um, helped me see all the work and preparation that was required day after day to have even just a little bit of success in scientific research. And knowing what it took to do something before doing it is so important because this was what kept me patient and fighting during the start of my studies and research when I sucked and when, I, when it was particularly tough and grinding. So in my third year um, as an undergraduate, Purely by fate, I went to one of AP's summer lectures at ECUST. At the time, I knew a little bit about the exchange program coordinated by Paging between ECUST and Queens that would later bring me to Belfast. Um, but this was just one of many options that I had, and I wasn't sure about this at all. And I just, I mustered the courage and sent an email to AP, just out of the blue to ask if I could have a chat with him. Um, to be honest, I did it more so as a challenge to myself just to try, because I thought a world-class researcher, a fellow of the Irish Royal Irish Academy, pretty much basically a rock star on a tour, couldn't possibly have time for a random undergraduate like me. Well, I knew from then on, you never know until you try, because I didn't just get a chat with AP, I got dinner. And by the time I got home, it was midnight. I remember my dad asking me then, what in the world could we have been chatting about for five hours straight? I don't really remember now, to be honest. Um, AP probably does with his crazy good memory, but what I will always remember is the hospitality, the humbleness and intelligence a that AP showed that night. Qualities that I now know Queens and Ireland in general stands for, and that I'm still working towards. And needless to say, this chat set my mind to come to Belfast. And when I arrived at Belfast, it was wet. It was very late. There were about 10 of us, maybe even more. We had all been on the road for some 25 hours, having flown more than 9,000 kilometers. Some of us traveling abroad for the first time. And Pedrin himself was there at the airport with a bus from Queens to greet us. He was super energetic, telling us about different places as we were driving by and helping us with our stuff. And because of that, one of the volunteers at, that met us at the dorms act, actually thought that Pedrin was my dad. And that's what he has been for the dozens of students that have come through this exchange program that, ha that he had helped build and now coordinates. A father and a mentor. Um, frankly, without this exchange program, it was quite likely that I wouldn't have done a PhD. And I know so would have been the case for many, many of my friends. So knowing how much this changed our lives really inspired me to do my part and to look up to paging. This not only led to me becoming the first lead peer mentor for international students within our school, but also motivated me to constantly work and improve my craft and hope that I could inspire others. The last but certainly not least would be my PhD supervisor, Professor Stephen Bell. So we have a saying in Chinese where we refer to talented people as good horses. And it goes something like this. So there are lots of good horses lots of them, but barely anyone who knows how to tame them. And Stephen certainly knew his horses because he motivated the best out of me and gave me the right platform to shine. Stephen is always encouraging and has never, never ever turned down any of my ideas, regardless of how awful they actually were. And Stephen is so encouraging, he would try to give me all the credit. A typical thing that he would do is he would tell me a brilliant idea, forget about it completely, so that whenever I remind him, he would believe it was my idea. Stephen has always encouraged me to continue to challenge myself to get to the next level. He has done so very supplely and elegantly. For example, even when I was a PhD, he gave me the freedom and authority to build my little team of researchers within the Bells group to pursue my ideas. And this has really motivated the best out of me. I remember the day I decided to go and ask Stephen whether I could correspond with him on the papers from the projects I helped look after. Although no PhD or even postdocs ever gets to do that in our line of work. And I thought I'd probably get my ass kicked, to be honest, but thought I'd try anyways. 
And instead, Stephen started apologizing to me for how he hadn't thought about this sooner. So that's my supervisor, humble, intelligent, and always pushing me to the next level and willing to give me the spotlight. So in a nutshell, I've learned so much during my PhD at Queens. All of those things boils down into staying humble, yet confident of your capabilities, and being curious and focused on the problem at hand. So my storytelling is going to stop here, but luckily my story, story at Ireland won't stop here. As a matter of fact, my career at Queen's has only just begun. I hope during my time here, I would not only be able to continue to grow, but also to inspire and pass on these wisdoms to the talented upcoming early career researchers that will be coming from all over the world to pursue their dreams at Queen's and Ireland, just like what my mentors have done for me. Thanks. So can I, can I just say, uh, we were, I found that most impressive. You're so gracious, your resilience, your ambition, and your humility. And I've no doubt that we'll be hearing about you for, for many years to come. So thank you very much. So um, we thought that we'd end today's celebration with the story of another chemist who also showed promise and benefited from support in the early days of her career. She made very major contributions to crystallography and to our understanding of organic molecules and as we'll see, her contributions extended way beyond the bounds of organic chemistry. So I invite you to view this specially prepared biographical video about Kathleen Lonsdale, which will be presented by Dr. Linda Nunney. My name is Linda Lunney. Until I retired 18 months ago, I worked in the Dictionary of Irish Biography which is a project of the Royal Irish Academy. Kathleen Lonsdale got one of the over 9,000 biographies that we wrote for that publication. Along with a colleague, Andalini, I worked on her life. Why should we remember Kathleen Lonsdale? Why is this prize named in her honor? And why more generally should we remember her in Ireland? She hadn't the best start in life, at least to outward appearances. She was born in 1903, the youngest of 10 children in Newbridge, County Kildare. Her father was an Englishman who was the town postmaster, but he had a drink problem. And when Kathleen was only a small girl, her mother separated from her father and took her family of 10 children to England. Four of the children died in infancy. But Kathleen made a great success of her education. She got the top county scholarship to go to high school. And when she was 16, she was able to go to attend Bedford College for Women in London. The Nobel Prize winning crystallographer, W.H. Bragg, was the external examiner on Kathleen's outstanding final degree exams. And he was so impressed by the diminutive and very determined young woman that there and then he asked her to join his group in University College London to study the crystals of organic compounds. She developed novel techniques and insights and she was able to confirm the structure of the benzene ring, which was something that had puzzled scientists, including Bragg, for more than 60 years. Another major contribution was her compilation of essential reference tables for X-ray crystallography. So, we should remember Lonsdale for more than her contributions to chemistry, acknowledging her importance as a role model for women. And she was someone who made practical recommendations on the changes to society that would make it possible for more women to work in science and industry. And still, that isn't all. In 1935, she and her unusually supportive husband, Thomas Lonsdale, became members of the Society of Friends. And as Quakers, they opposed war. But Kathleen Lonsdale refused to register for war work and thus was sentenced to a month in Holloway Prison. Her experiences of the dire conditions led her to become a campaigner for prison reform. Later, she also became internationally known 
as a leader in movements opposing nuclear testing and armaments. And to finish with, something to think about. A quotation from Lonsdale herself, which is at least as relevant today to young and to old scientists, at least as relevant as it was in the 1950s. I believe in good, not just as a hypothesis, but is absolutely fundamental to all my way of life. A scientist should take interest in national and international affairs, not as a politician, but in making sure that facts are properly known and trying to ensure that science is used for good and not for evil purposes. Thank you for that, Lyndon. What a truly inspirational, courageous woman. So this concludes uh, this afternoon's ceremony. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us, wherever you may be. I'd especially like to thank the, the sponsors and the assessors. And of course, great thanks to the Academy, to uh, Teresa Gallagher, Helena Gallagher, and Carol, not Gallagher, Martin. <laughs> Um, but thank you all very much and congratulations again to Yukai, to his academic mentors and to his family. Well done. <laughs>